John, do you remember where you are? <sighs> King's College Hospital, <laughs> London. Thank God, thank God. A major trauma centre. Hit the curb, jackknifed onto the verge. Have we got a good pulse? Have we got an output? In no? One of the busiest a &E departments in the world. He will probably scream, but he won't remember. No, stop! Ah! A place where love. Come on, sir. Let's go. Up you go. No, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> and loss. It's, it's all right. Unfold every single day. Ah! Oh, don't cry. Yeah. And we'll make, and we'll make sure mummy stays okay. with you. Will you send? Who's not busy? Squeeze that. We can't give up. I know. Come on. We've got to be strong for mum. If it is the last bit, hey. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department. Oh! In just one 24-hour period. I never cease to be amazed at the robustness of human beings. I love you. And the strength of their relationships. Love, it's a reflex. It's what you do. For many of the families, despite the devastation that they may be facing, they give unconditional love. Yeah. It ain't as bad as what it looks, Trace. No, no, but he said, well, if, if, I suppose it happened in the library, it was like a lot of blood and all that. I suppose they've had to cover themselves. But it was funny, he got out of the ambulance, he went, Nan, he said, I've had gas and air, he went, I can't stop laughing. <laughs> What did you actually do? Um, I was doing a handstand and I hit my foot on a fish tank. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, so you, you went up and your foot hit Yeah, because I couldn't like, go up and I was trying to do it's like a spinning <laughs> handstand thing. But I was only just trying what, to go up because I couldn't actually stuff? get... I do, You're not um, supposed break to laugh. Sorry, I know. <laughs> just um, a break dance, but then I was trying... <laughs> Eleven-year-old Archie tripped and fell up a step at the library. Did, did it look worse when it first happened? Yeah. What did it look like? You have a load of blood in your mouth. Were you scared? Bro, I was just in shock. But then what, I'm going to try and be a paramedic. Isn't it? Got a university and all that for that shit. You do. To be a policeman, to be a fireman, you have to do every, you have to go to university for everything. Oh. Amy King, stop her speaking. Okay. Keep it. Adult trauma, 12 minutes, that's adult trauma, 12 minutes. One in ten of all patients of A&E come in after a fall. We get a lot of falls, people climbing trees, being stupid, people being drunk, falling out of windows, people kamikaze in thinking that they can, you know, instead of just going to their front door and down the stairs, they can just jump out their window when they're drunk. People can fall off anything, can't they? Horses, nightclub stages, but we get a lot of that, a lot of falling off stages. And that's usually actually women. So men fall off ladders and women fall off stages thinking that they're dancing like Beyonce, I think. Another one, fall, eight to 10 steps, hit a wall with a head injury, plus, plus lacerations to his head. 
53-year-old John has fallen down a flight of steps at his home, a hostel in South London. Paramedics suspect he's been drinking. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I've got John here. He is uh, 53 years old. He's been running at speed down um, the staircase. One set of the staircase, he's running to the wall, turned around and has fallen down 10 stairs. Disabilities, he's got multiple lacerations to the top of his head. They are deep and they do come you know they do show the story that he's hit he's gone straight into something um, he's got one right at the top others a little one but the one at the top is probably going to give you some interest I've been unable to do a second survey because John's been very very poorly compliant with being um, immobilised we had, did have the proper stuff on that's gone and that's now the third attempt he just okay. keeps ripping it off John John I'm going to check your tummy Good radio you feel any pain? Yeah. Radio pulse is good. Here, no. Seconds. Here. 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 John, any pain? No pain. No pain. Lower limbs clear. Clear, clear. My friend was in the room at the time, and he uh, he heard me fall, and apparently. The sound of my head hitting the floor was like a, a walnut cracker, you know. On my count to three, we are going back. Okay. One, two, three. I must have just went down like a sack of spuds, you know. Very good. We are going to check your neck out. I don't. I didn't really feel no pain or nothing. I just remember waking up. Right, John. You need to do us a really big favour here. You need to keep your head as still as you can. Right. And after that, I must have. I've blacked out a little bit or something. Don't pay me. Tell us. Okay, okay, okay. I'm okay. finishing. I'm finishing. Here? No. Okay. So you get very, very tied up with patients. Sometimes you are maybe the first friendly face they've spoken to in a while. So you have to be able to build up a relationship really, really quickly with someone so that they can trust you or at least believe what you're saying. My name's Rory, I'm one of the doctors here. So what have you been up to today? We was in the library, Yeah. going up the stairs, and then I like tripped or something, and then I went face first and like oh, right. done all my like teeth and... Rubbish, and your lip? Yeah. Okay, did it knock you out? Uh, no, but I was really like dizzy and... Okay, all right then. Well, do you mind if I just have a look at your lip and your teeth to start with, and then yeah. I'll see what we, we can do about it. Do you know what the, what the stairs were made of? Uh, what well, you was there? What was metal that? and wood. Okay. Like the edge of it, like going across, like the bottom. Of you it. didn't break any of the stairs. You didn't break any of the wood off or anything no, like no. that. So none of it's going to be in your lip. No, no. No. All right. Okay. Let's have a look at you. In fact, what might be easier if you come and sit on this chair for me. But um, when you like like try and like wobble my my teeth ain't wobbly, but when yeah. you try it, yeah, yeah, it kind of hurts. So just check your eyes. To start with. Good man. You let me know if it's sore at all, OK? And be honest, Archie. You know what it is? He's frightened. But you've got to be honest. No. Right. What I want to do is just give it a quick clean so I can have a look at it properly. All right, I'll just get some stuff to clean right, it with. thank you. With, and then I'll be back. Mum, do you stitch it up? Be honest. You say no, you don't do. No, they don't. If they've got to do them, you've got to have them. Amy King, Stuffler speaking. Hi. A 57-year-old tree surgeon has fallen off a stepladder, landing heavily on a sharp metal bar. He's struggling to breathe, and paramedics think he's damaged his lung. Kevin was out uh, at work, and he'd gone off to the woods, picked up the phone, and it was his brother saying, look, Kevin's had an accident. I wasn't overly worried at that point, I have to say, because, as I say, Kevin had broken a few bones in the past and he survived um, his cracked ribs and, you know, he's quite a tough cookie. OK. 
Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Adam's strong core, 12 minutes. Adam's strong core, 12 minutes. When I got to King's College, I asked the nurse where my husband was. She sort of said, oh, well, he's gone straight through to the trauma unit. I just assumed that it, it was something that would to do with a fracture, really, as opposed to anything any more life-threatening. Tree surgeon Kevin fell from a ladder. He's been scanned to see how badly his chest is damaged. So I was just on the ground, I just couldn't. I was just screaming. As soon as I hit the pit, I was like screaming. That must have been horrible. We've been married for 35 years in July this year. We met at a dance, <laughs> which happened in those days, in a church hall. And just relax for a bit. Don't say anything, just take five to ten minutes. When I first met Kevin, I think at some point he wanted to be a farmer. It's in his being that he likes being outside. He has got this affinity with trees. That's just part of who he is. Kevin, mm. uh, the X-ray is available now. Yeah, good. Uh, unfortunately, you've got a problem in that. Problem with the X-ray? Yeah. There's an air leak. An air leak? Yeah. The doctor came in and said, oh, look, unfortunately, there has been... Um, we, we are detecting that there is... Um, a problem with the lung that there's been a puncture. Most likely you need a, a drain, just drain in your um, the thorax. Yeah. yeah, just to get the air out. It's nothing to do with the, my heart, is it? No, it's not the heart. Right, it's just the... Um, the, uh... the ribs I knew we could cope with, but the lung was, was slightly more, more, more difficult and, you know, my heart sank. I thought, oh God, you know, what's this going to entail? <laughs> Belly starting to rumble. You what? Belly starting to rumble. <laughs> Have you had any dinner yet? No. Sure, you, he's been up here for hours. Yeah, yeah I'm drinking, yeah. Imagine, like, we were going to get, like, chicken oh, and chips. what can he eat? That's what he's worried about. Yeah, like, well, what could I eat? You can eat whatever you want. <laughs> chicken and chips <laughs> it is, then, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Now, I want to give it a clean, and I want to give it a really good clean, all right? It's just wa salty water. It's just, it'll feel wet more than anything. That we can do for you. Yeah, that's it, fantastic. That is fantastic. And I'll just have a very gentle look on the inside to see if I need to clean it there as well. Oh. OK. And just show me your teeth again. Oh. Good man. All right, OK. So, the cut on the outside is fine. I think what we'll do is we'll put some steri strips on it. They're like thin little plasters. I'll show them to you in a minute. You've got a small cut on the inside of your lip as well. The good news is, is we don't need to do anything with it. We can just leave it and it gets better on its own. It's not all that bad, is it? Leave those steri strips on for as long as they last. Do they fall off? Yeah. If they come off, you know, by the morning, then by all means put a couple more on, on uh, and that will sort it out. But that will heal up of its own accord. Thanks. All the rest will heal up OK. okay. Um, if you're still worried about it after, go to the then, GP. Then go to the GP. OK. You'd, you'd be surprised. They do heal up really yeah. well. All right, take care. Thank See you. ya. We're going to get a bit. Luke says it's really nice. Not to eat? Yeah. I couldn't eat a rabbit and I couldn't eat goat. I wouldn't want to eat goat. Have you ever had goat's cheese? No. Oh, my not. God. It's the foul-tasting thing you've ever had in your life, goat's cheese. Yeah. There's nothing worse than goat's cheese. Yeah. Open your mouth. 
mouth for me, John. Open what? up your mouth really wide. Okay. That's very good. Uh, I was born in a council estate in Manchester. Normal childhood, no particular problems. I left school at 16. Met a girl and then, like I said, we used to work on the railways and I moved out to London by transferring from, uh, from one station to another as a passenger guard. Okay. Who's going to call you up when you right. fall? Okay. Who's going to pick now. you up? When you fall down. Right, okay. And my girlfriend left me. <laughs> so I was sort of stuck on my own in London then, you know. It can be a very lonely, intimidating place at times, especially if you, if you don't know many people. Who's going to call you up when things go? Oh my God, it's worse than I thought it was. Oh, shit. Don't, don't put your hands in that just yet. Keep your hands out. Oh my. Well, Keep your hands out of that, please. But then I did fall on hard times, you know. I was on the streets for a couple of years. That one, I feel a little bit wobbly. I feel a little bit wobbly, you know what I mean? So, because he, he used to be a, a drug user at one point, but I packed all that in, came all off that, and uh, sort of booze has took over where drugs has left off, in a way, so. John? Sorry, I know you're not. Did you look at the fridge in my glasses? Oh, I I think I've had two marriage proposals. You, you do get some funny, funny patients. Especially the uh, anything with drugs, and they tend to wake up, and then they're very, very apologetic. I would just tell them that my huge six foot four boyfriend wouldn't be very happy to hear it. <laughs> Doctors need to insert a tube into Kevin's chest to reinflate his lungs. Yes, well, it hurts, but I'm, I'm OK with it. It's all right, it's fine, though. Thanks very much. We can give you more morphine. That's not an issue at all. No. I did get a sense that he was in quite a lot of pain, but that's his usual modus operandi. It hurts, but He's always been very anti-taking painkillers and anything like that. He's always concerned that I shouldn't see him in pain and, and that it would upset me more than the pain that he's going through. We know that to have a bit of painkiller on board, it always helps. And you know, some people just think, "No, I'm going to be, a, I'm going to be, I'm going to be really hard about it. I'm not, I'm not going to need painkillers." And then you just see it in their face, and you just, they, you could just see them thinking, "Why didn't I have the morphine?" Before the incision is made, Kevin is given a local anaesthetic. Let us know if you need anything. Nothing. Even if it's a hand to hold. Thank you. Kevin, maybe if you tilt your head the other way as well, so you don't, if you open your eyes, you don't see it. Okay. No, no, I don't want to see it. Football man? I am, yep, on full team. Who do you support? Oh, no. Um, but we're going to see um, the Man U Tottenham game, which should be really good. Same as when you're in paediatrics and you kind of, you know, you're trying to put a cannula in, you start shaking the rattle of the baby, trying to distract it. You know, it works the same with adults. We went last year and, um, and we've been quite a few times to the London club since we've been down. Yes. Honestly, Chelsea is the worst ground. I mean, I generally try and talk to them about the stuff that comes straight to my head, which is usually a load of rubbish. 
And everyone needs someone to hold their hand, don't they? Okay, squeeze, squeeze. Squeeze as hard as you can. Don't worry, I'm all right. Do you have any other hobbies? You're not a fisherman, are you? No, no, I don't. But most of my time's been. My Oh! Oh! Okay. Okay. All right, sir. Squeeze, squeeze. Oh! 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 Okay, try and get that, keep the arm up, it might oh, make it a bit easier, oh, okay? Oh, 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 okay, oh, is that better? Oh, oh, oh. I'm, I'm such a wuss. I'm like the biggest wuss. I probably shouldn't even, oh, any type of pain upsets me. I'll oh. be in the bed next to you, a broken hand. Oh. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. We'll be able to talk about Crystal Palace. Oh. <laughs> the whole uh, the whole procedure, I think, it sucks pretty much. But it is amazing. It works. But you just have to go through that pain, unfortunately. There you go. It was a distant memory five minutes ago. <laughs> Ish. Good job doing what here. Pardon? Good job doing what here. Well, that's why I said, yeah, yeah. oh, you probably should go out. That was painful. I heard him say that, and then I heard him say, it's a good job June's not here. Because <laughs> he knows I'm not very good with blood and stuff like that, but anyway. I heard you screech. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it must have been painful. OK, anyway, I think just relax now. I'm just going to sit here. I've got the papers I'm going to read. So you just sit here and try and just relax and don't speak, don't do anything. All right? I'm just here, OK? I'm not romanticising this because tree surgery is very hard work, very demanding physically. You're, you're climbing, you're pushing, you're pulling. It's a tough old job, but it's, it's great. It's enjoyable, it's physical, keeps you fit, and uh, it's something I enjoy doing. June, and my wife, just secretly think that you're getting too old for this kind of work. He's 58, and it's 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 not it's a young man's occupation. I don't think that he'll ever be a classic, sitting in an armchair reading a book or anything like that. You know. Hey there, man. his skull when he fell. His wounds need to be closed and he'll be kept in for observation. Have we had anything to drink today, John? Any alcohol today? <laughs> A little yeah. bit? What, how much have you had? Eight cans. Eight cans. What time did you start? Six o'clock. Six o'clock this morning? Mm. Okay. You had any sleep? No. Mm. I want to detox. You want to detox? Do you want some help with this? I tell you what, I can see if I can put a referral in and speak to one of them about it. Okay? Um, yeah. I'll see if I can get in touch with one okay. of them. Okay. Mm, Sam's there. I'm there. Hello, King Zaney. Yeah. Any alcohol? Oh, right, okay. Um, how long? Thank you very much. Bye. The 31 year old farmer has fallen and hit his head on a wall. He was leaving a club after a work night out. He'd been drinking for seven hours. When we first found him, I thought, he's just drunk and he's fallen over. Like, he'll get up in a minute. But then as you sort of got closer, you could see like a pool of blood on the, on the wall, which was death's when I think it became really concerning. It doesn't happen every day, so for me it was a bit like, oh my God, actually this is really serious. I 
it'll be all right. Yeah. How's everywhere else? Oh, let's hope for a nice night, really. You're on a trolley. If you go any further, you're going to fall out and really hurt yourself. Just sit down and sober up a bit. Alcohol and A&E, I think everybody thinks that it's the weekend and the night, but actually, it's all the time. Um, just to let you know, I've just called the police. I've got a few police here with a gentleman that ambulance brought in. I've not yet booked him in, but he um, is drunk and um, the ambulance lady came up to me and just said, oh, you need to call security. He says he's got a knife on him and he's been really aggressive to us. I'm going to get him seen sooner rather than later, I think, because it's bleeding as well. And also because he's going to be a bit of a handful. So I'll get one of our doctors to see him. Can I get a nurse to reception, please? It's really difficult when you have someone that's really drunk and you're trying to look after all your cubicles, and these people are so unsteady on their feet. It's like babysitting. You have to babysit them back to bed. Should have fallen on the floor like that lady. I would have got seen straight away. Please don't do that in here. We need to bring you into the cubicle, because you've had the police, you've had the ambulance, and now you're going to have to have a housekeeper to clear up after you. You need to come out, sir, into the cubicle. We can sort that out. Yeah? Well, no, no, I was Look. gonna, I was gonna fuck you. Shh, stop swearing. If you'd left your swear. things on, it wouldn't have gone everywhere. We We've got you a cubicle. You want my blood, you want my blood. It is your blood, go on into the cubicle, oh, sir. My blood. It's your bleeding, sir. You want my blood, you want my blood. You're right, how's your night going? Oh. If, if we do let go, what does he, does he immediately try yeah, to get up? Yeah. Virtually, you know, after 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday, everything is due to alcohol. Patients can present because they're acutely intoxicated with alcohol, but they can be here because they've got in a scrap, which has been alcohol fueled. Um, or they've had a fall or a more serious injury. Patients can certainly drink so much that we would classify them as being in a coma when actually they're not able to respond meaningfully to any questions that we're asking. Okay, one, three, one, two, three. Um, he's 31. He's been at a work party or pretty much all afternoon today. Um, he's been drinking since about um, sort of midday, one o'clock. Anyway, he cracked his head on, um, on a low wall. Um, he's got an isolated, isolated head injury, um, as you see there. Um, that's the only injury that we can find on him. Nothing higher than standing height, no, no, we don't he, think. No, he was literally just okay. standing, and the next thing they, know, they saw he was in, he was in the, the head road. Right. Um, that's all we can see. His GCS has been three pretty much throughout. Mm. He groans every now and again and lifts his arms. He doesn't actually, he doesn't actually talk to us. Um, He's not actually open his eyes at all. So anyone with him? There's, there's there, two they, with him. They're on the way. Uh, there's about 15 people around him. Okay, okay, sure. There was quite a big group of us. The, the restaurant had sort of a bar, but we're a bit, a bit more of a like, party atmosphere. It was a bit of a cocktail bar. There was a few cocktails floating around. But Ross had already been out during the day, and I think he'd had uh, a few too many before he got to the restaurant, and he didn't eat because. Uh, well, because he was late. I mean, not sure there's any other drugs or anything like that. No, he, I'm not sure any, okay. any meds uh, that he takes, but he has been drinking very, very heavily today. OK, thanks so much, guys. Can we get just some stats and BP before we do a 12 ECG? Would that be right? Yeah, we'll be doing proper pressure. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was just dying to get to that point, and then that proper sobered me up. I didn't even... I didn't really know. And, like, when Sarah went over to him in the bushes, I kind of thought, like, I didn't realise, because I was talking to Fingy, like, like, Taylor or Aggie or something, and, um... And then I saw, and I looked over, and I saw her in a bush, and I thought, what is she doing? And I looked at her, and I thought, fuck, that's what I Yeah. When you see one of your friends that's, that's hurt, like, it's, like, instantly sobering, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and you just kind of go into autopilot, so it just changes everyone's perspective on things, really. Yeah. Hi, um, it's uh, Simon Cowden, the trauma consultant. Um, we've just had a guy in who's had a head injury, maybe intoxicated, but his GCS 8. Can we get a CT head and neck on him, please? It sounds like the history not, that he's not fallen more than standing height.
Um, no past history that they were of the people that we've got there, his boss were colleagues that they're all drinking quite heavily. Not aware of any past history. Now, John, I'm going to clean your head now, okay? So keep it um, still for me. Won't be long, right? Okay, just the water. I've had quite a few jobs, yeah. Postman, dustman. I used to work on the railways. I mean, my favourite passion is drumming, you know. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was always in groups, you know, playing drums. Oh, ow, duh. Started off with my mum's Tupperware kit and uh, knitting needles. <laughs> okay, a little bit. Now, there used to be a place called the Electric Circus in Manchester. And then one week it went in and all these punks from London came up because pistols were playing there. Instead of peace and love on a jacket, it was all hate and war. You know, it was all leather jackets. I thought, wow, this is, you know, you could, you could just sense the buzz about it, you know. Pardon? Discharge me. Discharge you? Oh. I have, we have to probably keep eye on you to see whether there's anything that we need to worry about for some time. It all changed from that day on. Yeah, I thought, forget about the last bus I'm watching the end of the gig, you know. Yeah. I must have found my head more than I thought, you know. Pardon? I must have found my head more than I thought. Yeah. Whew. I was in a band called The Reducers. Uh, they were from Bury in Lancashire. Mm -hmm. I had a single made once. Yeah, made a thousand copies. Man with the Gun, it was called. After that? John Peel played it a couple of times. But, uh, you know, <laughs> good old John Peel. Ross has been sent for an urgent CT scan to determine the extent of his head injuries. If there's a bad brain injury, um, you may get some clues from the, from the CT scan straight away that you can see that there's some bruising in the brain. More worryingly, there can be some swelling in the, in the brain. Depending on what part of the brain has been affected, the patient may lose some of the ability to move part of the body. Um, they may lose the ability to speak. Patients may lose their ability to live independently. And until you get those scan results back, it can be very difficult to, to predict. Um, so I'm sure I'll be fine. Um, but I just thought I'd call you and let you know, obviously he's not going to be home yet. And um, they're taking him for a scan as sort of a precaution and that. Ross's wife is at home with their eight-year-old son. So, so this might teach him a lesson or two, but hopefully he'll... Uh... <laughs> he's really loving with the family as well, like his, um, his, his little son and, um, and, and Vicky. I think he puts her through a bit, but they're, so, they're good together as yeah. a couple and as a family, yeah. so... Don't worry or anything, yeah? I know, it's, I know it's easier said than done, but I'll call you in a little while. All right, cool. Cheers, mate. Bye. Bless her. Yeah. She's all right, bless her. Obviously, when, when you're working with, with people for a long time, you pretty much become best friends and then teamwork between best friends. You know, if you've got a team that's all really close, it's just it just comes like naturally, it's just easy, so. the time really that I've been in this job and looking at patients who've injured their brain, um, the mechanism of injury can sometimes seem staggeringly trivial in a way and can have catastrophic, um, catastrophic outcomes. So falling over from standing height um, can actually very sadly leave people with permanent brain damage. That's just unfortunately an element of bad luck. Such a shame that it's not an antidote to uh, boots.
I've only ever been in that sort of state like once, maybe twice. I wouldn't again because things like that happen when you get that pissed. But I could never get to that stage where I'm not in control of what I'm doing or saying. I don't get me wrong, there's been occasions where I've had a, there's been a few drunk texts and whatever, and like I thought, oh, I should have done that. I get a little bit worried now, you know, because it's been... It's a long time, isn't it? And to not say... He's all right. Yeah, this is fun. No, that's what I mean. Like, what can I ask? No news. They say it's good news, but obviously, no news when your friend's laying on a bed with a head injury. Perhaps you don't think it's good news. No. Um, so it's quite a very sobering experience to be sort of to be just sat waiting, not knowing. Okay, hospital. It's a funny smell. <laughs> it's got me one word. No, okay, hospital. Word association. Death. <laughs> <laughs> Life. Good one. Yeah. Seed. <laughs> Tennis. Mm. Uh, white. Black. It's over two hours since Barman Ross fell over drunk. Scans show a fracture to his eye socket and a possible bleed on the brain. We kind of said, didn't we, that we'll stay until we know what's going on. I didn't really want him waking up in A&E thinking, where am I, how have I got here? Um, without having one of us there to maybe explain to him or, you know, just obviously peace of mind for him, like, to know that he's not there by himself. The full extent of damage won't be known until Ross sobers up. Ross. Yeah, she said it looks a lot worse than it actually is. Yeah, sort of dry blood. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad because there's blood on the pillow. Yeah. If, if patients have had a lot to drink and a head injury, it can complicate the diagnosis in a way. You're not sure whether they're behaving strangely because they've had a lot of alcohol or drugs or because they've actually suffered some injury to the brain. Apparently, she said, like, he, he gets the occasional, gets the amp occasionally and sort of <laughs> makes a little bit of a groan and a fuck off, but that's about it. If you've got a patient who's got a reduced conscious level and the scan comes back, um, completely normal, then that's, you know, then that's a good feeling. You're thinking, well, actually, hopefully this is all just due to the alcohol and it's going to wear off in a few hours' time. Um, on the other hand, if you see, see a scan and you can see there's lots of bruising and fractures, then you know this patient's in for the long haul and the outcome's going to be uncertain. Heart rate's quite low. 68. Mm -hmm. 60. There's bradycardia. Mm -hmm. 60s bradycardia, that means you, like, that's what, if you're a fit, really fit individual, mm. 60 heartbeats a minute is like, is what you aim for. Mm. I'd say Ross with I'd his... say Ross isn't a fit individual. <laughs> that's what I mean, that's what it's quite low for. Well. Don't often come across that, do we? Yeah, I think you're right too. Is this a surgical SHO? Um, can I just let you know about a lady that's swallowed a drill piece that's over 10 centimetres long? It's something that you stick in the end of a drill to drill into a wall, yeah. It's, it's really big. Is it Christmas? It's not Christmas, no, I'm afraid not, John. Why not? 
We've had was. Christmas. That happened in February. Uh, in December. Oh, I mean. my. It's February now. It's February. It's February. It's Christmas. Right, I'm just going to pop your clothes on there. I just need to move you out, I'm afraid, until we can get you a bed. All right. I'm in hospital. Yeah. I was flying fast to sleep. It's difficult knowing that people are going to go out to really hard circumstances and it's sobering to know that not everyone has that home to go to, that not everyone has a safe place to be. You, you can't help everyone, but you can certainly do what you can for them in the time that you've got them. John? Mm. Sorry to disturb you again. We're going to have to the ward now, OK? OK. Maybe pop your hand in the bed there. I'm 54 now, this year. It's, it's difficult to know what to do, isn't it? I find it uh, hard to sort of step out of that environment, if you know what I mean. You, you know, you can get very despondent, you know, sometimes. But I, I think I've turned the corner, you know. You know why? Lately, I don't know why, but... I feel more positive this year than I have done for a long time. Uh, if he didn't want to work the weekend, he could have just said he didn't need to smash his head on the, on the wall just to get out of it. We'd both sort of been up for like getting on for like over 20 hours. A bit of fatigue, I guess, sets in. So like you have to, you have to like give your laugh or your cry sort of thing. So you have to make a bit of a joke about things. Got us, Russ. Sleeping beauty. Hear me, Russ. Yeah. You all right? That's red. Up now, are you? We had a little. Uh, okay, if he's walking up a little bit, then we can ask whether it's painful or not. Yeah. And we can exclude completely it's not broken. Yeah. But you know that it's got mm. some, you know, some uh, yeah. small amount of blood in the in the brain, and that's what the neurosurgeon came in for to see him. And I think the decision you said they said to you was he going to be kept in for a few days for observations. Yeah. Okay. How are you feeling? Right, right. Good one. <laughs> good for your eyes. Okay, I'll let me try to open up for you. This one is a little bit swollen, okay? Go on, open your eyes. Okay. How, how do you feel now? Do you know where you are? Um, my guess is a hospital. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> right. Okay. That's fine. How's your head? Got a headache? No. No? A hangover? Not yet. Not yet, yeah, you wait until a couple like of hours, mate. You're both wearing matching grey jackets. What was that all about? <laughs> <laughs> Twins. <laughs> I was getting ready first, so Mark copied me. Mark had texted me during the day saying, really? what are you wearing? And I told him, and yeah. Yeah, I, came, I came to yeah. the pub and Mark was wearing, so...
when I came out, it took me seven weeks to get back into work because I couldn't function properly. And the doctor turned around and went, you're lucky to be alive where well, you smashed your head is the weakest part of the skull. I felt a bit foolish, to be honest, being with my workmates and everything and getting into that state probably wasn't the most sensible thing I've ever done. Thank you.